Welcome to the second of our dedicated sessions dealing with Tecla Structural Designer Integration with Tecla Structures. Within this session we will demonstrate the concept of model connectivity, the integration process between Tecla Structural Designer and Tecla Structures and some of the information parameters transferred between the packages. Firstly, when considering model connectivity it is important to understand that parts are transferred from Tecla Structures into Tecla Structural Designer based on the grip point positions. The yellow grip indicates the start of the member, and the red grip indicates the end. As members need to be analytically supported and the model generally analytically connected, it is vital to ensure that parts are generated to span between common intersection points. These can be grid intersections, construction line positions or even to the center of column parts but the overriding rule is that parts cannot be generated from a position used for detailing purposes. For example, parts modeled to the face of a supporting member's flange. If parts are generally created from a location which would be physically but not analytically correct, then the resulting Tecla structural designer model is not be analytically connected, and will most likely simply fail any validation processes performed. Parts then need to be generated to the correct locations to ensure analytical connectivity as we have already stated. This does not mean that connection macros cannot be assigned to any members which are generated to common grid and part locations. So the model can still be used for detailing purposes even if generated for analysis and design. It should be noted however that Tecla Structural Designer does not feature detailing elements such as end plates, cleats or bolt positions within the software. If these items are transferred, they may generate analysis elements within Tecla Structural Designer and have an effect on the analysis of the structure. To avoid this from happening, we would recommend that these types of items are omitted from the transfer process. This is our example model on a steelwork floor grillage, which we have created in Tecla Structures. As we select all of the parts on the screen, you can see that the grip points have been created in the correct locations for analytical connectivity. Parts span from grid to grid or from center of member to center of member. We can also highlight particular members to check the grip point locations are correct and then apply the detail connections. We can launch the component catalog and find a suitable connection to apply. In this case, this will be the two end plate connections that we find in the catalog. Applying the connections builds the required plates, bolts and welds. We can investigate the model and find that all of the required elements have been correctly created. When generating an analytically connected model, the Tecla structure user should be aware that there is a significant difference between physically moving members to obtain the correct physical location or assigning an offset value to obtain the correct position. Moving members also moves the grip points of the part. This can potentially affect the connectivity of the structure once the transfer into Tecla structural designer has been completed. Offset values move the physical representation of the affected part but leaves the grip points in the original location. This can be the best method to use then when wanting to generate a model which is physically correct but also analytically correct. Here we have a very small example model of two beam sections, which have been defined between grid intersection points. The orientation of the members has been defined as being the center and top of members. We can check that this is the case by selecting the two members and orbiting to suit. Clicking on the first of the beams, we can use the move special linear command to move the beam member by 12 inches in the global y direction and 6 inches below the defined level for the second beam we edit the member properties and apply offset values to move the part by the same physical amounts as the first member zooming in and orbiting around the model shows that the two beams appear to have been relocated by the same amounts selecting the first beam shows that the grip points have similarly moved to suit the new location this would potentially lead to an unconnected member being found during the validation process within Tecla Structural Designer. The second beam however which has been offset, shows the grip points still located on the beam intersections. This would then be the better solution to ensure analytical connectivity after integration transfer. Care should be taken with slabs modeled in Tecla. As the analysis wire position in Tecla Structural Designer is always modeled to the extreme edges of the slab. 
This will most probably lead to the slab being unsupported when transferred through to Tekla's structural designer, especially when slabs are generated to cover the full extent of supporting member flanges. We would recommend that users consider not exporting this slab to Tekla's structural designer, and we will mention how this can be done later in the session. There is also an option within the import wizard within Tekla's structural designer to stop the import of all slab elements. In these cases, the slabs can be quickly generated within Tekla Structural Designer and used for the purposes of analysis and design. The newly generated slabs can also be disabled from any export processes. Where members cannot be mapped correctly automatically by the import or export wizard, conversion files may be used. These are simple text files which stipulate the part or attribute references which cannot be mapped and the intended substitution. These files can be amended and added to over time so that a company-wide mapping file can be generated. To show conversion files being used, we firstly try to import a model containing some issues. We click on the file menu and use the command Tekla Structural Designer, Import From. We browse to the correct folder and set the import file name for the chosen model file. When we click on Preview Conversions, you can see that the process is performed quickly but two materials are not being mapped correctly. When mapping problems occur, it is always useful to open the conversion text log file so that the unmapped references can be found. This file will be found in the same directory as the CXL file that you try to import or the location being exported to. It should then just be a case of typing the correct Tecla structure references to the right-hand side of the equals sign on each line. We then save the file as a .cnv extension text file, and close down both the files and the Windows Explorer screen. We can then browse to the correct conversion file in the Material Conversion File section, and finally click on the preview of conversions to ensure that no further problems occur. Our model is now correctly mapped, and can be imported without any further issues occurring. The default export from Tecla structures will export all parts including connections and other ancillary items which cannot be designed in Tecla Structural Designer. There is an alternative option which is to select everything visible on the screen, and then to export selected items. The Tecla Structures user can use object group filters to disable the visibility of any item which is not analytically significant, and choose to then only export the remaining visible items. This is our example of a fully detailed floor grillage with end plates cleats and bolts all fully visible. As such, the plated parts will all be exported to Tecla Structural Designer as a default. To avoid this, we will remove them from the view and then export only the remaining visible items. Accessing the Properties dialog of the view, we can click on the Object Group button to set a suitable filter. Within the dialog, we add a new filter line and set the property argument to being against class and the condition to being does not equal. For the value, we can use the option select from model, and choose any of the plates. In our case, this should set the value to being 99. It should be noted that alternative filters can be used, and you should use filters to achieve the required results on your own particular models. After clicking on the modify button, the plates have all disappeared from the view, and we can click on the OK button to exit the dialog. Bolts will not be exported using the Tecla Structural Designer Integrator, although we can also disable the visibility for purely reasons of clarity. This can be done within the visibility settings, and you can see that disabling the options and clicking on Modify also removes the bolts from the view. We can check the grip point locations are correct for the items, and then select everything remaining visible on the screen. Once everything visible has been selected, we click on the file menu and launch the export process. Once all of the relevant options have been defined, the command to be used would be export selected at the bottom of the dialog. This will ensure that only the selected items in the view will be exported, and none of the end plates or other connection items will be transferred. We will now demonstrate the process of exporting a model from Tecla Structural Designer and importing this into Tecla Structures. In our example, we have an analyzed and designed model ready to export. We can see from the shape that the structure is a mixture of steel and concrete, 
with members and slabs present, and is in a state ready to communicate through to tech law structures. To export the model, we click on the tech law structures export command held on the home tab. On the first screen of the wizard, information with regards to tech law structures is shown. We can read the information shown on the dialog and then press next to continue on to the next screen. The next screen of the wizard displays options to relocate the model to suit real-world coordinates. For this example, we will assume that these are not required, and simply continue onwards. The filter tab prompts us for the items to be exported, we will keep the default settings in this dialog, and simply click on next to access the next screen of the export wizard. The mapping process shows that there are no problems with regards to the export, and everything is recognized. The same is true for the decking profile mapping, and so we can move on to the final stage of the export process. We provide a name and location for the exported file, confirm that this will be a first-time export as no equivalent Tecla structures model already exists, and finally click finish to begin the export process. We can check the item coloring, held under the review mode, to view the BIM status of the model and individual items if required. Within Tecla structures, we start a new model and after providing a name, open the default 3D view. We can start the import process now by clicking on the file menu, and using the command Tecla Structural Designer, import from. When the import from Tecla Structural Designer dialog appears, we click on the Import File button to set the correct CXL file name and location. We use the Preview Conversion button to ensure that there are no conversion problems in the incoming file. As you can see, all parts and materials are being mapped correctly, and there are no conversion problems. We click on the Import at Origin button to import the file at the same coordinates as specified in Tecla Structural Designer. The file now begins processing and creating all of the content behind the scenes. Once the processing has completed, the program provides a list of statistics for the created content. We can review this and then close down the dialog. The initial view may clip some of the imported model content. If you find or suspect that this is the case, simply edit the view depth settings and increase the values. Our model is now imported and we can continue with the project inside Tech Law Structures adding more detail, or creating the necessary project documentation. We will also demonstrate the process of exporting a model from Tech Law Structures and importing this into Tech Law Structural Designer. This is our example Tech Law Structures model, which we will integrate into Tech Law Structural Designer. As you can see, the model is a mixture of concrete and steelwork and is ready to be exported. We start the export process by clicking on the file menu, and accessing the command Tecla Structural Designer, Export To. Within the Export to Tecla Structural Designer dialog, we can firstly check the output file location and the allocated file name. These will be fine using the default settings of the model directory and the model name. We then click on the Preview Conversions button to check the mapping of the parts. This is quickly completed, and as can be seen, no errors are encountered. We are therefore ready to export the model to Tecla Structural Designer. We click on the Export Model command to begin the processing of the model. This checks the amount of objects in the model, 2,900 in this case, and finally shows a list of statistics related to the export. Our exported file contains 568 members, 195 panels and 9 wall elements. We can now swap onto the Tecla Structural Designer software and start the import process. Within Tecla Structural Designer, we start a new model and click on the Structural BIM Import command, held on the Home tab, to begin the import process. We choose the file to be import, and this in turn starts to populate the information within the dialog. The operation remains at the default setting of first time import, and we can keep the unit system and head code at the default settings as well. There is no relocation required, and we can check the model range on the right hand side of the dialog to confirm this. We will keep the integration filter at the default settings to import all materials, and then check and confirm the final two dialogs related to mapping. This will check the materials and decking profiles being imported. 
Once we have checked the import settings fully, we can click on the finish button to complete the import process. The model is now imported, we can check the validation of the model and see that this is returned without any problems. Our example model is now ready to have loading applied and a full design of the model process. It should be noted that member end forces will be imported into tech law structures if the relevant options are used. Beam parts will display maximum and minimum values for moment, shear and axial forces. Bracing parts will display the maximum axial force only. Column parts will display maximum and minimum values for moment, shear and axial forces. These forces will be displayed when performing an inquiry on the part itself. Here is our sample model which has been imported from Tecla Structural Designer. We can use this as an example to show the parameters populated by end forces on import. Firstly, we perform an inquire part operation on one of the horizontal beam parts. Scrolling down through the inquiry report, we can find the parameter showing the maximum vertical shear result on the start end of the member. Similarly the result for the finish end can also be located adjacent to the start. We next perform an inquire part command on one of the bracing members to view the axial force result. This again is listed at the bottom of the report, and is shown under the parameter axial max. Finally we check the column member using the same inquiry part command. There are 10 parameters populated for column parts and these relate to axial forces, shear and moments at the base of the stanchion. These are provided for both major and minor axes, and it can be seen that both maximum and minimum amounts are provided for. This information completes the session of the specific Tecla Structures Integration course. We will continue with Part 3 of the course which will cover synchronization and managing model changes.